what are the things most bang for your buck things we can implement now that fit within their life right now? They're like, oh my gosh, I'm never going to be able to get up for sunrise, but it is easier for them, to, for them to put these on at sunset, right? That's They just throw them on and they just do whatever they do anyways. Or sometimes it's just stop eating too close to bedtime. And usually that can make enough of a difference over a few weeks that then they're like, okay, what's the next thing? Rather than just throwing everything at them and then them getting overwhelmed asking themselves again, why am I doing this? And then failing, right? So just doing the little things. Hey there, I wanted to let you know about my latest book, Body Confident, that's coming out in September, 2024. Call it a critical thinking guide to your health journey because it is a framework, a guide, a blueprint that's gonna help you understand and be able to filter all the information that's out there on the internet that you're getting from social media, YouTube, go to bodyconfidentbook.com, sign up for updates. The book comes out in September. All right, everybody, it's Coach Bronson here. And today I've got uh, Dr. Stephen Hussey. Dr. Stephen Hussey, you have been around for a while. I, I, I don't know if I ever got to thank you really for talking at our conference last year, um, but we've done a few things together over the past few years. Um, I've been following what you do. You've got some really cool stuff on the kind of cutting edge of the, you could almost call it the technology of health um, <laughs> that you're working on. But uh, for those of you that, for anybody listening that doesn't know who you are, if you could just give us a quick rundown of, you know, where you come from, what you're doing and things like that. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, to start, like my passion for health it's probably started for just like anybody else's, you know, like with health issues, you know, uh, as a kid, mm -hmm. uh, had a lot of health issues, um, lots of inflammatory type things. What the, I guess that how they'd be described, um, things like asthma and allergies and chronic hives and, um, that kind of stuff, IBS. Uh, and so I got really, as I grew up, you know, dealing with these conditions, um, ultimately ended up with type one diabetes, uh, at age nine. Um, but yeah, you know, so all that stuff kind of forced my hand kind of to have to be interested in health, um, or, or physiology or the body or, or disease or something like that, you know? And so, um, in college, I started to figure out that the way I lived my life impacted those things. And I'd never been told that before. So, um, wow. I became very curious about health and, you know, experimentation about what I can do, uh, to change my health outcome, uh, and my life in general, you know? Um, and so it's kind of been a never ending journey for me. Um, I'm figuring that out, but I'm, you know, trained as a chiropractor and I have a master's in human nutrition and functional medicine. And those things, uh, you know, taught me a lot of stuff, a lot of baseline education, but the things that I've learned and the experiences I've gone through, uh, with my health and other things, uh, have kind of shaped my views as to now. And, and so, I just kind of, I kind of jokingly say sometimes that I'm unhealthily obsessed with health <laughs> to a sense uh, and that I, yeah. and, it's, and it's not necessarily health, it's like information. You know, I, mm -hmm. I like, if you classify me in like those personality types, um, you know, I am definitely high calculator. Like mm, I want okay. to know, the, like if someone says something to me in my head, I'm saying, prove it. You know, like I want the facts, I want the logic. You know, and, and I want to know why things happen. So that's kind of my yeah. thing. Um, okay. I want to know why I want the information. So I know why. So that's, that's kind of me. Um, and you know, what I do is, is I practice chiropractic and I spread information, uh, information yeah. that I right. found. So, yeah. I wish more people would get obsessed about why mm. in a lot of different, in a lot of different ways, right? You know, I, you, you, you've heard me talk and, and, you know, we, we all, we, I think everyone's read start with why and we all understand the importance of understanding why you want to do things. Um, I'm, I'm coming to the realization over the past year or so that there's actually like four or five or six different whys, right? There's why things work. There's why things have the effect that they do. There's why do you want to do something? There's why is that important to you? There's why does this matter in your life? Like there's a whole bunch of different ways that we can apply the why concept. Um, and I find that people don't, don't apply it across the board enough as, uh, I think everyone would be beneficial to do. I had, you know, um, do you know, Neil Burton, uh, mm -hmm. keto coach, Neil, 
Um, he, I did a video with him recently and he called, he said, what did he say? He said, um, he tells his clients that they need to be four year olds about their health and just ask why, 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 mm -hmm. why, and just annoy the crap out of themselves with how much they're asking why. Like if you're four year old, because that's really where everybody's at. Yeah. And I, you know, like, and it could be anything, literally, it could be. You know, what? some healthy behavior that you heard somewhere, you know, that you do because you heard somewhere. And at some point, you got to ask, why am I doing this? Mm -hmm. You know, because maybe it's working for you. Maybe it's not. But maybe you're holding on to it for some reason. And you got to yeah. ask yourself why that is. Or maybe it's some unhealthy behavior that you're doing that you're really having trouble getting rid of. You know, mm -hmm. you ask yourself why. And until you get to figure out that why and what that is, it's going to be really hard to let go. But once yeah. you identify the why and you see why that is, you can either change something about your situation or even sometimes just the realization of why you're like, oh, that's why I do that. That doesn't make sense. Yeah. And then you let it go. Right. Yeah. But yeah. if you just keep doing it and you are almost like a slave to the behavior uh, without mm -hmm. ever asking why, then you could just be stuck in it forever. Yeah. Uh, be obsessed about the why. It's, it's crazy how we can struggle with understanding why we have habits but then we don't ask why we have habits mm. it's like i can't stop doing this i'm doing this all the time i don't understand have you ever asked yourself why have you ever stopped for a second and asked why and it amazes me how many people that i work with that i see on a regular basis who haven't actually stopped they're struggling to understand why none of this stuff is working but then they've never actually stopped just for a second and then tried to figure it out Mm -hmm. Instead, this is, a, you might see this. Instead, it's, let me just try this. Let me just try this. Let me just try this. Let me try this. And instead of saying, wait a second, what's actually going on here? What am I really trying to do? Um, yeah. Well, you and even like, even yeah, like yeah. the, the, like you, she said, like, let me try this. Let me try this. Let me try this. And if you don't ask, like, it's, that's kind of like, you know, keep putting out the fires without ever catching the arsonist, you know, yeah. Yeah. Of asking yourself why the fires keep starting. You know, uh, and figuring that out. Yeah, exactly. What is so you you talked about health issues when you were young. Um, some of those sounded interesting. You you picked off something that I honestly had forgotten about. That is asthma. Mm -hmm. um, I had I had activity induced asthma growing up. Um, I used to have to carry an inhaler. It's crazy thinking about this because I I totally had forgotten about this. Um, it mostly went away as I got older. Um, and, you know, got into shape and, and, and my life, you know, kind of forgot I had it. Um, mm. There was a period of time where I had some minor issues with it as I was transitioning into trying to find a good nutrition plan. And it was that cycle of I got into fitness, things got better, but then I never fixed my nutrition. So they got better, but then they started getting worse again. I had to figure out what the heck was going on. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, that's interesting. And it just, I just had to say that because I totally forgot that I used that I had asthma as a kid. Um, <laughs> That's a good thing. Yes. Yeah, right. <laughs> asthma, IBS, um, type one diabetes. Mm -hmm. How does, how do those things affect your perception, right? Of, of your ability, what you can do. Uh, and then what you, how you can change that. Did you grow up thinking, man, all these things are happening to me? Not, not necessarily that my life sucks, but all these things are going on. This is horrible. Um, I don't see other people aren't dealing with this, but then how do you get out of that to say, I can make a difference. I can change it. Yeah. Well, you know, I guess at times, like yeah. as a kid, I wasn't, I didn't have the cognition yet, I guess, to think, right. Why right. is this happening to me? I mean, I could ask the question, but I don't know that I could think about it yet. And so, but as a kid, you're definitely thinking, why is this happening to me? This is unfair. Like, my friends don't have this stuff, uh -huh. you know, um, and and I guess you know it's all this conditioning that you get from adults, really. Uh, when you're a kid, like I remember going to doctor's offices and just being told that you know this was your reality, this is how you deal with it, you know, uh -huh. and they gave me a kind of a protocol prescription for what to do um, as far as like I'm gonna have to administer insulin the rest of my life and and that kind of stuff or like you had like the inhaler, you know, I had inhalers, I had the nebulizer, the little machine that you breathe into, yep. um, all these things like that was, and it was just like my reality. And, you know, I'd have to be careful about 
exercise, uh, whether that induced an asthma attack or my blood sugar would go low because I overdid the insulin dose or something like that. Like yeah, it's, it's yeah. hard to be a pancreas. And like, so yeah, I guess you're kind of programmed into, um, I can't do these things. And I think, um, being fully honest in high school, I would start to use it as an excuse to not do things, mm. um, which, or an excuse as to why I didn't give it my all or something like that, you yeah. know, um, yeah. when I didn't want to, um, which, you know, looking back, I, or I remember, I remember the time when I started, when I actually thought about that. And it was again, an adult that gave me this thought, but this, this time it was like more constructive. I think it was my soccer coach. Um, mm -hmm. cause I remember, I, I don't remember what year, maybe junior year or something like that. Um, and we would do these long, like 45 minute Indian runs, you know, for training for soccer. And, uh, I remember like dropping out of the run and being like, coach, I can't do it. Like, um, my blood sugar is too high or something like that. Okay. And, um, and he would, he looked straight at me. He was just like, why don't you take care of yourself? <laughs> and I was just like, it goes. yeah. And he was, and he was just like, it's, it hit me like. It's not an excuse. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like the excuses that you're using is because of something you're not doing. Mm -hmm. Like if you took care of yourself, you'd be able to do this just fine. It's like everybody else. Wow. And yeah. I was like, huh. You know? And so then from that point on, I've probably used it again an excuse later, but it just, that stuck in my head. Mm -hmm. And that coach and I were very, we disagreed on a lot of things because we were very similar. I think. Um, <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So, but you know, and he probably doesn't know it, but like that direct question really got me thinking a different way. And it was just mm -hmm. the start. Like obviously it didn't change everything about me right at that, that second or whatever, my whole thinking, but it just got me thinking, you're not limited by this. If you yeah. just do what you need to do, you can, you can be just like everybody else. So it's not a, it's not an, it's not a, you can actually be active in the process of what I call stacking information, stacking knowledge. Um, a lot of people are not, that goes back to just what we're talking about. A lot of people don't ask enough why questions. Um, information stacking often leads to, at some point, you know enough, you, you, you need to take action. What did that look like for you? Like you, okay, I, I got all these things that are going on in my life. I don't want them to be going on in my life anymore. How do I get out of that? Was it um, just going out and doing a ton of research was it you found something you want you wanted to try it you found this and tried it and then evaluated like what is your process of hey i want to get out of this i want to change my life what's step one yeah um again i think it'll go back to specific people again uh yeah that that's awesome though me. yeah um and so yeah we, you know we didn't prescript this but you're going right along with my life man you're asking the, I got the <laughs> so then like yeah i graduated high school and I'm in college and, and I had no idea what I wanted to major in. Um, you know, I th thought about, you know, maybe be a physician of some sort or whatever. So I was taking these chemistry classes and, and science classes. Um, but I met a girl and she was, that's how all very, the best stories start, <laughs> but she was very into health more than I was at that point. Yeah. But I was starting to see at that point now that I was out on my own, like, and controlling everything, like my food and everything now, like what I ate dictated how well I could manage the diabetes. I was like, hmm, um, that's interesting. No doctor ever told me that. Yep. Um, and then, but she was like, she was like my advocate. She was like, because, you know, at that point, you know, probably 19, 20 years old is when I first got recommended a statin mm -hmm. drug and, oh, um, and a blood pressure medication because that's the standard of care for anybody who'd been diabetic as long as I have, not for any other reason. Um, and she just was, because like, you've been diabetic, whether you have any issues or not, just just because, right. just because of that, like preventatively, wow. right? Um, yeah. yeah. Which we can go into all that if you want to, but yeah. But she was just like she was like absolutely not, right? And she started showing me like these <laughs> things, and so from that point, like the things I could do, and like this information, and we were both health and wellness majors, and so we were studying you know, these things, uh, uh, nutrition and physiology and things like that. And so then it just became like, well, there's a lot, I don't know, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm, and there's a lot I've been told that's probably not true. And so then it just became again, like this almost obsession was just like, what is the truth? And then yeah. also, also doubting what I was learning, you know? So it wasn't, it wasn't that 
I just thought that everything I was learning was wrong or that the mainstream education was wrong. It's just that I started to understand that, and I got a very liberal arts education. So I got, I had a lot of um, different types of professors and people. And I started to learn that if your education didn't teach you to question your education, it wasn't an education. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so, yeah. and there were some professors that, you know, agreed with that and some of them that didn't. Um, but, you know, we had a lot of humanities classes and, and studying just human history and things like that. And you started to mm -hmm. learn all these things. And it just like, it just made you start to question, like, do we actually know this, what this textbook says, or do we not? Right. Um, or is this just a theory, you know, and this is just the theory that's being taught right now. And so that just opened up so many doors for me as far as like, there's more information out there. And I think that I had that, um, that was trained to me by my father who was always, he was a why person, you know, like we'd be doing science projects in, in fourth grade or whatever. And I'm just like, uh -huh. this happened. And he's like, yeah, but why? And I was like, I don't know. I'm going to get a grade, a good grade. And he was like, no, but why <laughs> did that happen? You know? And he would always ask that, you know, like, or, or just anything, you know, like we'd yeah. be traveling or whatever, uh, somewhere. And I'd say we're at exit this. And, um, and he's like, well, um, what does that mean? Or, or why, where are we in the state? Because what do you mean? And I was like, oh, we're, 150 miles from here, then that, that's yep. what that means. And yep. he'd be like, yeah. So he's just try kind to of connect, try to connect the dots question. and make connections to other, like, learn how to correlate data and stuff. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Which is what they say was like, uh, when they studied Einstein's brain, what was like amazing for him is that he had this ability, like his, he had, his brain was bigger in areas and more developed in areas that connected things, right? Uh -huh. They were good at making connections. Like he could take yeah. this abstract thing and this abstract thing and, and draw a connection between them and, put together these theories and stuff. Not that yeah. I'm Einstein or anything that my dad was, but it's just like, <laughs> that's, the, that's what leads to this, this, um, you know, this, uh, these ideas and these, uh, sure. pushes you forward. It's like being able to connect things. Yeah. So when did you, what was the, what were some of the first things that you did? Um, like, okay, was it mostly initially just, I needed to, to learn how to manage type one diabetes. Um, and then you kind of went into, okay, did you do anything specifically for asthma? Did you do anything specifically for IBS? Did you have any other things? Like, did you just kind of say, I'm going to take these one at a time or did they just kind of all over time just disappear? Um, yeah, they kind of, they kind of over time disappeared. Uh, I'd say <laughs> that the asthma and the, the chronic hives and the uh, allergies and stuff, they just kind of disappeared when I started like just eating a more whole foods diet. It still wasn't, yeah great by my standards today but um but it was better and those things just kind of fade i just didn't notice them as much um and, it, and the, was that that the whole foods diet change was that primarily from uh the the trying to change and improve your type 1 diabetes management um or is yeah. that just a general i'm feeling i'm learning more i need to do better yeah i mean that was that was generally just some learning more let's eat healthier that's a good idea yep you know yep. It didn't come till a little bit later where I discovered like, oh, if I don't eat as many carbohydrates, it's way easier to control my blood sugars mm -hmm. um, because, you know, I'm trying to be a pancreas and it's hard to predict exactly all the physiology that's going to happen that influences blood sugar, you know, so right. the less variables you can have, the better. Um, but, but yeah, these things were just kind of slowly going away um, and, and it was just just lifestyle stuff, you know, cause I don't, I don't remember exactly when asthma just wasn't a thing anymore. Yeah. But it was sometime in cool? college. Isn't that know? cool? That's awesome. Yeah. 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 Um, but then it became really because the type one's not going anywhere. Like that's kind of like, collateral damage from the inflammation uh -huh. as a kid. So it's like that later, like after college, maybe chiropractic school, like that's when I really started experimenting with that. Like how can I best regulate these blood sugars, even though they're better than they were, cause I'm not eating the, their standard American diet anymore, mm -hmm. but like, how could I really hone in on it? Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah. So it's kind of crazy. What is this idea? This is a crazy, crazy thought, right? You were able to take care of, because this is something we're going to get a little, a little off track. Cause I saw, I saw a post recently um, by some of our favorite people out there in the, in the, in the ether um, about how anybody who says one thing can fix all of your problems is a quack. Don't listen to them. They have no idea what they're talking about. And they were without saying it, they were specifically talking about railing against keto in the, in this context. Um, and 
you know, you know me, I, I, yeah, I'm not a label person. Um, I understand the need for labels and how it helps us structure concepts into ideas and gives people a package that's consumable in mm -hmm. their brain. Um, but the idea that you can just make some simple changes in, in what you're eating and all of these things disappear, right? I mean, isn't that, that I see so many people trying to find one solution for every little thing, right? Is there, is, you know, what is it? How would you, how do you explain that when someone says, well, all you did was this and then all these things went away. That doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, there is no such thing as a panacea, but sure. there are things there are things that seem to just um, help with a lot of different things and a lot of different people. Yeah. And, you know, it's just like, it's just like what Sean Baker says or what I've heard him say. I don't know if it's what he says all the time, but I've heard him say like, <laughs> you know, yes, everybody argues like, oh, that's an N of one, you mm -hmm. know, but a thousand N of ones is data. And there's a lot of people Yep. that, you know, go on keto or go on carnivore or, you know, low carb or just change your diet um, away from standard American diet and uh -huh. they see improvement. And there's lots and lots and lots of reports of these. Um, does that mean there's a one size fits way, one size fits all for every single person? Um, no. And there's different factors, but we know that consistently when people eliminate processed carbohydrates and yep. potentially all carbohydrates, that lots of good things happen for a lot of people. Um, and so that you can't ignore that. Um, and you can't say, you can't, maybe you don't agree with low carb, so you can't just sit there and say, oh, well, you know, anytime someone says one oh. thing fixes everything, then they're lying to you or whatever. Cause then you're just yep. choosing to ignore all that data because of your bias or preconceived notion or whatever. And so it's just, no, that's how you have to look at it. It's like, yes, it's helps a lot of people. So if you, what if you try it and it doesn't help for you, right? It doesn't, or it's not as helpful as it is for you than it was for your friend or something like that. Right. Um, right. It just means that you guys have had different lives and there's different things, but it doesn't mean that it's not good for you um, mm -hmm. or that it's not helping you in some way. It just means that you got to take a more comprehensive approach to things. And I would say that there is one thing that um, will solve or that can solve someone's problems or everyone's problems. And that is themselves. Um, they can solve all their problems. Um, they just have to be diligent enough to figure out their why and mm -hmm. the exact things that is going to work best for them. And it's useful to look at things like you're saying that something that's working for a lot of people, maybe not everybody, but for a lot of people yep. and think, Hmm, that's data, right? Yeah. Yeah. What are some of the things that you look at when we're looking at? So, you know, you did research, you were looking at things like, let me try this, let me try that. What are some of the factors that you're looking at before you want to try something? I see you got these glasses on, you got these blue blockers on. What did you do before you said, hey, I'm going to start doing this? Yeah. Um, I read a lot. Uh, yeah. I read a lot of books. Yeah. Uh, and, I read a lot of research and things like that. Not that that's how I dictate my whole life because I, I could tear apart medical research um, uh -huh. and the flaws in general, but mainly that's what I do. But I do have, like in my book, I talk about kind of a checklist um, okay. that I have and it's been a long time since I wrote that book. So I got to remember what that checklist is. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's more like it's, does it seem to work for a lot of people, right? Uh -huh. That's one. Um, because ultimately, you know, modern medical science is a new thing. Uh, humans are here uh, because of our instincts um, and and trial and error and observation, you know, um, yes. we've made it this far. Um, and so there's that. And then it's nice if there's some research behind it, you know. Um, it's nice if it has helped me personally. And then it becomes something I recommend for clients. And then if I recommend it to clients and it starts working for them, then it becomes something that's really solidified to me as, yes, this is something that is generally good for most people. And I also want to, I guess the fifth part of it is for me, does it make sense evolutionarily? Mm, okay. Like, does it make sense? And people are probably looking at me right now like, well, those glasses were not available 
Yeah. You know, yeah. but right. <laughs> there was also no artificial light. They so went I, no glasses. I, ne- I never would have had to deal with these glasses. Right. And there was never a thing because all we had was right. fire in the sun. Um, right. Exactly. It's not like they yeah. had screens then either. So right. this yeah. is an adaptation to a modern day environment that makes yeah. sense evolutionarily. But yeah, that's yeah. kind of my checklist is like, you know, does it work for a lot of people? Does it work for me? Has it worked for clients? Is there some data behind it? Does it make sense evolutionarily? Yeah. Um, I think, yeah. We, we, when you're talking to your clients, I think there's probably one other thing that, like me as a coach, that I'm working with my clients that I would throw into that is, does this make sense with where you are in your journey? Mm. Right. If I have somebody who's got metabolic syndrome, they got, you know, 50 pounds to lose, they can't move and get up off the chair, they've got hormone imbalances, they've got all these other things going on. The last thing I'm, I where I'm worried about is them researching what classes they need to be wearing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like that to me, that's more of a okay. Let's let's we've gotten the big things out of the way, right? That's something that we can we can we can add on to optimize down the road. But how more worried about the basics? Mm-hmm. Um, is that something? That, is that conversations you have to have with clients ever? Yeah, well, it's definitely meet them where they are type of thing. You know, like yeah. um, and just looking at their life. Okay, what things? What like? Uh, what big things can I implement now? Like what are the things most bang for your buck things we can implement now yeah. that fit within their life right now? Um, which sometimes it is like, they're like, Oh my gosh, I'm never going to be able to get up for sunrise. And, and, but it is easier for them to put, for them to put these on at mm-hmm. sunset, right? That's it. They yeah. just throw them on and they just do whatever they do anyways. Um, or, you know, um, sometimes it's just, you know, stop eating too close to bedtime. Uh, or something like that, you know, like, and, and usually that can make enough of a difference over a few weeks or something like that, that then they're like, okay, yeah. what's the next thing? Yeah. Okay. What's the next yeah. thing? Rather than just throwing everything at them and then them getting overwhelmed, asking themselves again, why am I doing this? Um, and, and then failing. Right. So yeah. it's just doing the little things, you know, so it's just like figuring that out. Cause sometimes, and that's what I'll do with clients a lot. I'll say, um, I'll, I'll say some health strategy or whatever. It's like, is that doable? for you um because if i don't ask that sometimes they just kind of they just write that down and they're thinking oh, i'll never be able to do that you know or whatever so then i ask them and they're like well there's this and i'm like okay well maybe just do it this way or maybe we don't do that yet let's do, just do this just focus on this yep. first you know but yep. it's an important question to ask like is that doable for you right now yeah absolutely um and or is it doable even if you think it's doable for you because this is something that just came up recently with one of my clients. Um, what about the rest of your family? Right. Mm. Okay. I'm going to do this. Well, if I do this, I got three kids and a husband and two dogs that I got to now figure out how they're going to work around everything that I just decided that I'm going to start doing before I talk to anybody else and change mm-hmm. the whole household schedule. It's like, well, wait a second, let's, let's take this whole thing into consideration here. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's a lot of different factors um, that we need to look at when we're making these changes. Yeah. What what do you do personally to help yourself stay on track, stay consistent with the things that you know you need to do to maintain where you are with your health right now? Yeah. Um I think I just I have to I guess organize my life in a way that keeps me on a path, you know? Mm. Um and I think that people need to realize sometimes that if you're going to make changes and they're going to be sustainable, you're going to have to lose some things sometimes. You're going to gain a ton too, though, mm-hmm. right? Um, and and I think that you have to be willing, if you want to make these changes and you really want that for yourself, you have to be willing to let go of some things that you may be really attached to, whether it's certain foods or behaviors or things like that. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, it may even be even certain people um, that are not on board with that. And I think that's kind of the first thing to helping you maintain that path and stay on track. It's just realizing that that may happen. Hopefully it doesn't, yeah. you know, yeah. but it may. And then also finding and creating and organizing that life that keeps you on track. Like it's, maybe finding a tribe of people that are doing the same thing Mm -hmm. Uh, because then even if other people in your life aren't encouraging you or supporting you or making it hard for you to stay on track, you got people you can go, Hey, I need help or, or I can talk about this and you get re-motivated. So like find those people and 
again, that's an example of something you'll gain. You may lose something, but you'll gain things too. Um, and then like just, you know, simple strategies. It, this wouldn't be the case for me anymore, but it used to be the case for me um, where I wasn't strong enough that if it was in the house, I wouldn't, I would not eat it because I knew it was bad for me, you know? So again, yeah. when I'm talking about organizing your life, like, which is harder to do if there's multiple people in your house. Um, but like, if, if I'm not, if I don't want to eat it, I don't put it in the house. Um, okay. You know, I don't budget for it. I don't do any, you know, that kind of stuff. You know, like, again, you really have to set yourself up for success. Um, what is it that changed that? Cause that's a big one. I, I I've talked to, to people, about my life the same is the same way there's things that i used to like nope not even going to do and you know french fries as, as an example mm -hmm. you know i was addicted to french fries i would have french fries twice a day every day if not french fries some kind of fried potato tater tots hash browns baked potato something potato like daily um it took me years to break that and then years of not having it before I can, I can go now, if I want to go to breakfast and have brunch, we'll have brunch. I might have some hash browns. I might not. But if I decide I want hash browns today, that's great. I have hash browns and then I don't worry about them until the next time I feel like maybe I want some hash browns, which, which could be a week. It could be two months. It could be whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a different thought process for me now than it was then. What, how, what does that change? How, how did, how did that change happen for you where you went from, I don't, I can't even have this at the house to if I have it, I have it. If I don't, I don't. If it's here, it's here, like whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Well, to now for me, it's like, you know, if I do, if I'm on the road or something like that and, and I do order like, uh, you know, a burger with no buns or whatever, and they it comes with fries and I forgot to ask not for them, like, I know I'm not going to touch them um, mm -hmm. or whatever. And that's just the way I am now. Um, but it wasn't the way it used to be. And I think that yeah. the change, well, the change for me, is the thing that we started out the conversation with was information. Um, like, so if I gained the information and I started learning what it does to me um, yes. or what it, how bad it was, it's just like, now I can't ignore that. You, you know, can't even, justify it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And also the thing for me was, um, I mean, for me personally, I have kind of direct data, uh, that I can get because of my blood sugars. Um, mm -hmm. You know, like I had that direct feedback and it's, and you know, and it's different for me because the average person can still get a CGM, you know, you can see that kind of stuff. But for me, it's way different because it's not that I just see it go up more, you know, because, you know, a person who's healthy and eats a French fry and their blood sugar goes up, that's normal. It's supposed to happen. Right. But it's supposed to come down within two hours. Um, whereas mine, if I did that, it would go up and it was harder to get down my whole regimen of how I usually control things is off. Right. Um, so that information for me, um, again, was kind of just direct feedback for me, but that kind yeah. of changed things like that. And, it's, and it would all, it was also more direct feedback for me because I would feel bad. Oh. <laughs> I would yeah, feel a exactly. lot worse, yeah. you know, um, than the average person who just ate a French fry. I mean that they may still feel, still feel bad too. But for me, if my blood sugar went too high and it was hard to get down, it sucks. It does not feel good. And mm -hmm. I knew the information about damage that may potentially do be doing. And it's like, this is just not worth it. Yeah. yeah. Um, That's for yeah. that. That mirrors almost exactly my, my, my experience with alcohol. Mm -hmm. uh, people ask me all the time. Cause I, I mean, I had several years where I would classify myself as an alcoholic functioning alcoholic. Um, and it took me a while and mostly the education of what alcohol was doing to me mm -hmm. when I went, First, before that, like I, I had to first care about my health. Then once I cared about my health and that became part of my, my motivation, learning how bad alcohol was for my health mm -hmm. connected those two things for me. And then literally, I like, I don't even, I, I don't, I care less about alcohol now. Like it yeah. is the bottom of the bottom of the things of the list of things I even think about. Um, and it would literally, people ask me, well, how do I stop drinking alcohol? I said, to learn more about what it's doing. Mm -hmm. The more you can understand how bad it really is, the more you'll, you'll, you cannot justify taking it anymore. Yeah. And I like, I like, I heard um, Chris Palmer say like, re-examine your relationship with alcohol. That's how he puts it uh, mm -hmm. when he's talking about things that potentially do for, he's talking about mental health, you know? Um, yeah. But, um, but yeah, I, I like that because it starts to make you think again, why, why yeah. are you using this? 
right? And to me, <laughs> you know, it's it's one way of many ways that people use to escape. Mm -hmm. And so you have to ask yourself, what are you trying to escape and why? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, and then again, it goes back to what we're saying about organizing and building your life for success and a certain goal you have. Mm -hmm. But if you start to do that and you start to see how good it makes you feel and how much you almost get, uh, in a sense, um, addicted to that, and you don't want to escape or you don't need to, yeah. at least, I guess. Maybe yeah. you, maybe sometimes you still want to, but you don't need the escape anymore. And that escape doesn't have to be something like a substance like alcohol or drugs or anything. It could just be food. Like there's certain foods that you people use as an escape or yeah. certain behavior uh, that people use as an escape. And so you, you really have to, again, start asking yourself, why am I using this um, and, and what am I trying to escape? Yeah. And try and get down to the bottom of that. Cause otherwise you're never going to be able to figure out, um, you know, what that is and then, and then what you can do to mitigate it. Right. So okay. that you don't need this thing. Yep. Yep. Uh, so this is going to be an interesting question for you because I have a feeling you probably track more than the average Joe when it comes to your intake, your activity, all the different things that you do because of your circumstances. But what does tracking look like for you? I actually, used to track a lot more than I do, uh, as far as like, you know, especially heart rate variability and things like that. Um, and I used to track a lot more than I do because it was more of an issue for me when I was eating a very, very diet and things like that. Mm. Yeah. Um, so I had to, because I needed to know like exactly how to, to manage things and keep blood sugar stable and right stuff. Up. But now I've just, I guess I've just kind of learned what my body, how my body reacts to certain foods and I just eat those yep. foods. Um, you know, so I don't have to track as much there. I just know what to do. Um, and you know, I have a, I have a different sense of measuring and tracking as far as like, especially medically. Um, and this is not medical advice, um, in no <laughs> way, shape or form, but I actually think that of the many, many hyper realities that humans have put in front of their faces these days. And hyper reality is just something we take as more real than what's actually real. Mm -hmm. um, that testing and tracking is a form of them. It's important in some cases. It's very useful in some cases, mm -hmm. and especially for motivation. Motivation, like if someone is testing something and that's not where it should be, you can use that to track and your success and keep you motivated. Um, but especially as far as like medical testing and medical research, I feel that we have become over reliant on these things. Um, and I think that we are depending on them to tell us if we're healthy or not. And it has become something that has become more real to us than what's actually real. And a perfect example yes. of this is, you know, the whole lean mass hyper responder things that, that Dave Feldman has coined and, and, you know, all these aspects of your health are improving, but your cholesterol goes up. And it's just like, I feel the best I've ever felt or felt in 20 years or something like that. Yeah. But this blood work's telling me I'm going to die. That makes right. no sense. Right. And so, and we also have to understand that in something, in a situation like that, you know, we've been testing cholesterol since the fifties, maybe uh, consistently. It's a very right. new thing. Humans have been here for, depending on what you believe, you know, but evolutionarily yep. 300,000 years. And before that, our ancestors and all life before that was just, they didn't have testing to tell them how they were going to live and die and all this kind of stuff. They just, yeah, they knew inherently kind of knew, you know, what was good and bad, or they learned from previous generations and that was kind of passed down. And we had this, this thing, like if you did this and it harmed you or made you feel sick, then don't do that again. Right. Um, if you're doing this and it makes you feel better, increases your chance of survival, then let's do that. And I just, I just heard a brilliant example of this the other day. Um, I was reading a book and it was talking about like the, the Inuit, and the Sherpas in Nepal and how they learned that they can pretty much survive on like um, higher fat and sunlight uh, pretty much. And that's a lot of the reason because they're, and but also they're at a patient of cold, which is making them very leptin sensitive. And uh -huh. they're basically like burning their own, their own fat and using sunlight and then eating fat. And they didn't need data and if you look at the science like you see how it works and you're like oh that's legit but they didn't need that science to figure that out it's just what right. they do you know 
and it's a very complicated thing but they just that's what that group of people does and like the tarahumara they born to run and everything like i'm not a huge fan of a long distance running but that specific fact, set of people me neither yeah, yeah that specific set of people figured it out that they could yep. do this and they you know those those people did that for generations and now they're very well adapted to doing that and they didn't need data to tell them that they were quote unquote born to run um uh -huh. not that all humans are but it's just like they figured that out and that's how humans have done things things forever yes and now we're letting yes. this very new thing <laughs> tell us these different things and just totally confuse us and i and i see it all the time with yep. clients and they just kind of like i i start talking to them and looking at the globe work and they're just like oh and they put the globe work down and they're like so what do i do <laughs> You know, um, and it's just, it's just funny. Like, so right. I, I think that measurements are important for motivation, um, depending on what you're measuring, but mm -hmm. I don't obsessively test and track everything and based my health on some of those things. And I think that yes. measuring for me, like measuring how at risk I am of something, let's say is how often am I getting sunlight? How often mm -hmm. am I grounding? How often am I sticking to my diet? Um, how often, how many positive loving relationships do I have? How often am I expressing love and gratitude versus anger and resentment? Like how, like these are the things that I have to observe in my life and not just look at this pain and say, oh, it says you're healthy. Now go back to doing all those or not doing all those things. <laughs> right. And Absolutely. waiting until that, that blood work goes right. bad. You know, it's just those, that's how I think we should measure our risk of a disease or not getting the, the goals that we want, hitting the goals that we want. Okay. No, I like that. I like that. Um, basically, I mean, what I'm hearing is the information is good, but it only has the meaning that you apply to it. Mm, that's a, that's inherited wealth right there. That's right? what that is. The, you know, yeah. Like this, this, this aspect of inherited wealth, like humans, because we are these big brained animals have learned how to pass down information. Right. But that's a form of inherited wealth. Just like you know, someone who inherits a ton of money doesn't inherit the wisdom and uh, respect that it took to, to earn that money. Earn that money. Yep. Right. Right. They don't so respect the money. They, yeah. they don't respect the money. So they tend to be frivolous with it and probably get themselves in trouble and um, ruin their life whatsoever. They tend to be, not everybody, but um, the same kind of thing comes with information. You know, if we've got this, you know, nowadays we can have a young, you know, student come in and just learn this information that has been that the process of gaining that, like think about all the scientists back in the Renaissance and everything and how they were, they had nothing to work off of. They were just coming up with these things, yep. these ideas and trying to figure yep. it out. And that, and that gave them the process of gaining that information, gave them humility and, and respect for that information. And they also figured out maybe they had respect for, for nature and where that information came from or whatever. And so now you just go in and you learn that and it's just, and all you think about is, okay, I learned this. What's the next step? What's the next step? And you're just standing no. on the shoulders of giants and you, there's no, nothing learned from that. And so then consumers become the ultimate form of inherited wealth. Um, yeah. Because like even a doctor has to go through this training, even though, and like this rigorous training to learn how to, you know, you know, practice medicine or whatever. And then the consumer of that medicine just comes in and uses the technology with no understanding whatsoever. Yep. So we get this place where, yes, this information can get you so many, get a, get us so many places. And we've seen that where humanity has progressed, but it cannot tell you what to do with the information or what use of it will mean for right. yourself or humanity. And so that's, it's this idea that again, um, that abusing, not necessarily we're meaning to abuse it, but we're kind of abusing this, this ability to pass on knowledge. And now we're sitting here, people are sitting there with their blood work panel and, and trying to track mm -hmm. and they're just like, um, this inherited wealth is sitting in front of them and they have no idea what to do with it or what it means. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. been that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's, that's good. That's really good. Um, what we took, we took, okay. We talked about the, the processes going all the way up to where we are now. How do you, and how you stay consistent and how you track and just your, your, your mindset around that. Does any of that over time get boring or feel restrictive? Um, for me personally, I don't know. Uh, well, it definitely doesn't feel restrictive. Okay. Because I feel, um, I feel empowered. Like when I, when I do these things and I stay consistent with it, I feel empowered because 
I know I'm making good decisions that are going to allow me to keep doing what I need to do and, and reach the goals in my life. So that's mm -hmm. empowering. So don't, I don't feel restricted by that at all. Um, boring. Uh, no. Um, I think I've been called boring. I think sometimes, <laughs> um, <laughs> but, uh, or I, maybe I, maybe I, maybe that's in my own head. Maybe I feel like people are viewing me as boring. Maybe that's me. Um, oh. But I'm definitely like, I don't know. I, you know, I of all places, I stopped drinking. I decided to stop drinking when I lived in Ireland. Um, wow! Is, yeah, of all yeah, the places, you know, drinking <laughs> capital, um, and it's just like part of the culture there. And so, but I would go out like in, and, you know, I was trying to meet people because I just moved there and everything. And so I go to these meetups or whatever, and yeah. It would always end up at a bar, no matter what we did. I try and go like with the hiking groups or the kayaking groups, or yeah. I played soccer with these guys on Sunday mornings, and and it always ended up there, like always at the bar. And so sometimes I go just to hang out, be social, and uh -huh. they're like, "You want to drink?" And I'm like, "No," and they're like, "And I," they're like, "You sure?" And I was like, "Yeah, I don't drink." And they're like, "Why?" And now I'm just like, "Well, if I say why, I'm going to make you feel bad about yourself." I think because yeah, you are right. yeah. as sure yeah. you want to, or or like. Or they think they either think this guy's boring or or he's just lame or whatever. Um, and maybe that's in my head. But yeah, I also it is. <laughs> it is in my head. But but I also did feel that like it wasn't this was this was boring to me. Pretty soon I'm sitting around the table with a bunch of drunk people mm -hmm. that I can't have a conversation with really because I'm not on their level, you know. <laughs> you uh, haven't drunk down to that level, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's just it became that became boring to me. Yeah. And so now if someone says we're going to a bar, I'm like, nah, I don't want to, you know, that's just not yeah. the culture for me. So I want to find the people that don't do that. And it, it's nothing against people who go to bars or drink. I'm, I, I don't, I'm not judging or anything. It's just that my lifestyle is not boring um, because of how much value I have in it and how much control it gives me and how much empowerment it gives me to, um, to change my health, you know, like to, to yep. and tend to maintain it. And that's not boring for me. And, you know, I found that if you find the people that are into the same thing, then you have a grand old time, you know? So you just, again, you got to find that tribe and it's, yeah. it never gets boring to me. It's just, it's easy for me, I think. And when I say structured like that, and I do the same thing every day, more or less, I have so much more time for everything else. I can get accomplished so much more. Yeah. Like you think about how many decisions you have to make every day. If I just take out the decisions of what am I going to eat? I know what I'm going to eat every single day. I don't have to think about that. I don't waste time thinking about it. And I just, I do it and I, and I get on to the next thing. And I have accomplished a lot more since then because I've eliminated a lot of these decisions. Like I know I'm not going to do this or that. And I know I am going to do this. And so, yeah. Nice. Okay. No, that's good. I, I, I feel very much the same way. I think um, anytime you are spending the the effort and energy in your life to reach a goal actively and actively participate in that process, your life can't be boring, mm. right? It's when it's when you don't have anywhere to go, people are worried about things being boring because they need yeah. distractions. When you don't need a distraction, that's how you know your life isn't boring. Yeah, that goes right back to just you don't need to escape. Yeah. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome, man. Well, this has been good. I think we could probably go for a lot longer, but I don't want this to be too long. I think YouTube says uh, 30 minutes the most is the is the most viewed range. We're at 50 right now. So um, I appreciate your time. Uh, we'll have to do this again. I got like four or five more questions I got to ask. So I'll, I'll get together with you sometime in the next few months. and We'll do this again. That's awesome. Um, where, can, where can people find you? I know you got a couple books. Um, you got a website. You got all these things you're doing. Well, tell, give us all your info. Yeah, my website is resourceyourhealth.com. Uh, my books are on there um, and uh, my health coaching and I have like a recommended products page, uh, like health products and things. Mm -hmm. um, and then my book is also on Amazon, but it's also on the publisher website, which is Chelsea Green if people don't want to use Amazon. Uh, and uh, and then my Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, it's just Dr. Stephen Hussey, um, Dr. Awesome. Stephen Hussey. People can reach awesome. out to me there. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Dr. Nussie. I appreciate it. Yeah, man.